5 forecast first. Sponsored by Airport Dental in Pensacola. Today's skies, oatmeal gray. We've had that steady east wind, and yes, we've had a little rain off and on, but it's been a little. Here's the latest radar. The steadier rain is well to our southwest across southeastern uh, Louisiana, but our counties are looking at light showers. Washington County, Fading and Mobile County also just faded, and Baldwin County. So this evening, about a third of us at most get wet. Then tomorrow we dry out and the sun comes out. News 5 at 6 starts right now. Now on WKRG News 5. Then the guy down in front of us about 10 feet up goes down. The guy to the right of him about three feet over goes down. The country gathers to remember 59 people killed and more than 500 hurt during the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. Tonight, a look at how the Gulf Coast is remembering the victims. Plus, safety is on the minds of many people here, including organizers of the Shrimp Festival. See how Gulf Shores police are working to calm fears. Then, Mobile Police need your help to find a man behind two robberies, what he did at each stop to try to get money. From WKRG News 5, the Gulf Coast News Leader, the news starts now. Hello, and thanks for joining us. I'm Mel Shaw. And I'm Roseanne Haven. First on 5, we have breaking news. News 5 has just confirmed the niece of a Mobile pastor was wounded in the mass shooting in Las Vegas. This is Danae Gibbs. Her uncle, Charles Gibbs, is the pastor of West Mobile Baptist Church. He says Danae was shot in her side. She underwent surgery and is now recovering. The Gulf Coast is remembering the 59 people killed and more than 500 injured during the mass shooting overnight in Las Vegas. This is brand new video of flags at half staff in Robertsdale. And here's a live look at flags at half staff at the USS Alabama. The Las Vegas shooting is the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Somebody just started running saying, oh my gosh, he's shot, he's shot. And there's people in front of us that were getting shot and you're seeing as you're hearing the shots going off, you were hearing just them hit the ground. You just heard from Vincent Sager, a witness to the shooting at the Jason Aldean concert. Another man hid in a freezer to escape the bullets. We begin our team coverage in Baldwin County. News 5's Debbie Williams is live in Gulf Shores with efforts there to keep everyone safe at next week's shrimp festival. Debbie? Well, Mel, Gulf Shores police would love to tell you every single detail of their safety measures in order to make you feel as secure as possible. But, of course, that would defeat the purpose. Instead, they say, they take this part of their job very seriously. In just a few days, the public beach area in Gulf Shores will be transformed into the National Shrimp Festival, all under the watchful eye of Gulf Shores police and the Baldwin County Sheriff's Office. It's something that we've planned for and we've really looked at for years. In light of what happened in Las Vegas. My heart breaks for those families. It was a tragedy that we shouldn't even have to deal with here. I can't let that stop me from going. Security at the festival is on more than a few minds. No matter what they put in place, if they really want to kill a lot of people, so I think they will find a way to do it. Gulf Shores police officers and supervisors have trained at large music festivals like Lollapalooza and Coachella to enhance their security measures. We wouldn't dare get into our tactics, techniques, or procedures, um, but those are things that we've looked at for years. I'll just say that. As in years past, it will be all hands on deck for the festival, but in times like these, folks say even that may not be enough. I don't think that any of our law enforcement can control all the things going on in the world today. There's not enough of them. They can do all they can, but they don't have enough manpower to protect all that's going on. And of course, the flags here at Gulf Shores Police Department at half staff, like the rest of the flags around Baldwin County. Now, the Shrimp Festival gets started next week at Thursday, October 12th. And by the end of that four day event, more than 100,000 people are expected to attend that festival. Live on the Baldwin County Beat in Gulf Shores, Debbie Williams, News 5. The mass shooting in Las Vegas has a personal connection for one family in Foley. That's right. Kathy Odom's daughter, Tiffany, was working at the Jason Aldean concert last night when gunfire suddenly began. Listen to how Odom describes getting that frantic call from her daughter. She calls me back and says that she had got out and she was running and she didn't know what direction to go. 
and she was all alone. She didn't know if her co-workers were still alive. And she ran to an, one of the buildings, and they said the shooter was in that building. So she ran out of there and went into the MGM building, and they got into a hallway and locked the doors. says she woke up shortly after midnight to the call. Tiffany ended up calling her mother back to tell her she was running from gunfire. Tiffany is safe, but her mother says she is still in shock. As people across the nation express their sympathy, members of the Mobile community are doing the same. Some commenting that the tragedy in Las Vegas cuts especially deep coming off our own outdoor music festival. News 5's Haley Minogue spoke with law enforcement, business owners, and concert goers. Haley, the responses were very similar from everyone you talked to, really. Yes, Roseanne, absolutely. You didn't even have to talk to these people, really ask them anything. As soon as they heard me mention the word Las Vegas, you could just see the heartbreak creep across their faces. And now with 1065 fresh off of the weekend, it's it's easy to see that this tragedy, though it happened hundreds of miles away, has really began to resonate in the Mobile community. As crews in Mobile worked on tearing down the stages from 1065, the scene seems to stand still in Las Vegas after a gunman shot and killed dozens of concert goers. I was still up this morning at 30 cleaning up from last night and saw that it, saw that pop up uh, on the news and man, heart, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to those guys. It's, uh, it's a terrible thing. Law enforcement officials ask themselves, how can we protect our community from a mass shooting? All cities are vulnerable to this type of stuff. You just don't know these deranged individuals that do these type crimes. You don't know where they originate from. Sheriff Cochran says they'll evaluate their current plans, especially with Mobile's outdoor events. You certainly could not have brought that firepower into an indoor event, so yeah, I think it'll have an effect on uh, outdoor events. City police officers will do the same. I'm quite sure um, we'll take a, a bigger look um, at what we're doing. While community members ask themselves questions that don't seem to have clear answers, how can we prevent this from happening? It's just happening way too often. I don't know if there need to be uh, more guns in the hand of security personnel or less guns in the hands of the people in general. Mobile police also told us there were only seven arrests this past weekend, all seven of those nonviolent offenses. Reporting live in Mobile, I'm Haley Minogue. Back to you all. Thank you, Haley. In the Web Center tonight, a Mobile band who played at 1065 also played in Las Vegas just hours before the violence. News 5's J.B. Buno joins us now live from the Web Center. J.B., thank God this local band is doing okay. Yeah, Rosine, uh, Roseanne Muscadine bloodline went from 1065 here in Mobile right to the Rounds 91 Harvard Festival in Las Vegas. That's the same one where this shooting occurred. Here's video from Friday. We're taking it back to Friday here when Muscadine Bloodline played on the main Jake PV Foundation stage around Sunset in Mobile. That's the first night of the festival there. The country duo is made up of Mobile natives Charlie Muncaster and Gary Stanton, who are now based out of Nashville. They went from Mobile at this show to Las Vegas, where they played shortly before Jason Aldean at the Mand near the Mandalay Bay Casino. And here in the Web Center, we're looking at the tweet that they sent out this morning. It reads, this picture was taken just six hours before a night that turned into a nightmare. Keep praying for those that were not as fortunate as us as the shooting was unfolding. They also tweeted about the active shooter being there on the strip, asking for prayers. Fortunately, the band and the entire crew are safe. Live in the Web Center, J.B. Buno, News 5. Breaking news right now. Authorities looking for two suspects after they recovered a stolen truck with more than a dozen guns inside. News 5's Alan Carter joins us now live from Grand Bay with new information on the search and how deputies found this truck, Alan. Well, Roseanne, really, it was a bizarre scene and frankly unreal to see investigators pull gun after gun after gun out of this truck, which was actually reported stolen yesterday from a business in Sims. But that pickup had a tracking system on it and employees were able to track it here in Grand Bay. At the time, one of the suspects was actually still inside the truck, but took off running when workers threatened to call deputies. Now, when officers arrived, they found the truck full of stolen items power tools, a Yeti cooler, and of course those guns, 11 rifles and shotguns 
and three handguns. The truck was returned to the business, but now investigators looking for two suspects they believe are involved. Investigators are also trying to figure out where exactly all of these guns came from. They're asking anyone that may have guns stolen recently to give them a call, especially if folks live in the northern part of Mobile County. Reporting live in Grand Bay, Alan Carter, News 5. Thank you, Alan. It's been a cloudy day across the Gulf Coast, but changes are on the way. News 5 Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals has details on some fall weather moving in, Alan. Yeah, I think the change is one that most people are going to like. You know it was cool today, it was cloudy. Tomorrow will be somewhat cool, but it will not be cloudy. And we'll get rid of the rain you see here. The steadier rain and thunderstorms, they're well to our west, but this evening right now in Greene County, Mississippi, you've got isolated showers from Old Avery southward along Highway 57. They're all moving into Wayne County, approaching east of Smithtown. Most of us, though, are really not going to see wet weather this evening. Yes, it has been somewhat of a cool Monday. Our high temperature today, 81, typical high 83. So we were below average, and you know, late last week we were talking record highs. Look where we started this morning. Above average, that simply tells you the clouds keep temperatures milder at night. They keep them cooler in the afternoon. So once we get rid of the clouds tomorrow, then we'll be back to typical levels. This evening, temperatures lower 70s, and most of us will start tomorrow morning close to 70 degrees. Just 10% chance of seeing wet weather to start the day. I'll have the rest of that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, Mobile Police investigating a homicide on Palmdale Drive. But some people say crime in the area happens on a daily basis. News 5's Ashley Knight shows us what they're concerned about. While police are still investigating the homicide that happened here last Friday, News 5 has learned from neighbors that crime here is an everyday occurrence. I actually put burglar bars on this house 15 years ago before I moved to West Mobile because my house had gotten broken into twice. I've been here, when I say, three months. Lawnmower's already been stolen off the carport. And according to police reports, a woman called back in July to report shots being fired into her house. Neighbors also tell us items like lawn equipment are stolen all the time. Joe Harrison grew up here. Oh yeah, 15, 20 years ago, it's a great neighborhood, upper middle class neighborhood, and uh, here over the last decade or so, it's really gone downhill. He says the drug activity is blatantly out in the open. I mean, there's times where they drive down the street with the windows down and I can smell pot. Harrison recalls one man who was shot and killed eight years ago, possibly because of what he saw going on around the neighborhood. And he was a great guy. He used to ride around the neighborhood and kind of report on crime and stuff like that and watch out for everybody's houses. And those, guys, those cats killed him because of that, you know. Meanwhile, police have still not released the name of the victim in Friday's shooting death, but we do know the woman was in her 20s. A neighbor tells us the victim shot back at her attacker, but that has not been confirmed by police. In Mobile, Ashley Knight, News 5. Still ahead on News 5 at 6 o'clock, Mobile police need your help to find this man wanted for two robberies, where police say he tried to get money and how he used cans of beer in his attempts. Plus, the city of Mobile starts restoration work at McNally Pier. When we come back to News 5 at 6 o'clock, new tonight at 6 o'clock, Mobile police need your help to catch a robbery suspect.